Hello students, this is Brooks Lamp, the director of the writing program, and I'm going to just introduce to you this final close reading paper. We're calling it Close Reading 4, uh, and uh, I want to make a comment or two explaining what is going on in this assignment. So I'll pause and ask you to read the assignment before I continue this um, these series of observations. So having read the assignment, you'll notice that uh, what this document will eventually consist of. Notice that it is going to be a four to five page essay followed by um, the journal entries that you're writing about as a single document. So if you can imagine for a moment, uh, it forms a packet, uh, so to speak, starting with an in this essay which kind of serves as an imaginary introduction to the selected journal entries. So, like the instructions tell you, you're going to have to type up the entries you want to write about because they're going to form part of a final uh, document that includes those entries in their typed form. That's why we say type them up because that'll be making it much easier for you to quote yourself uh, and to form the document at the end. The next thing I want to point out is this idea of imagining yourself as an editor writing an introduction to your journal. Uh, this is uh, fairly literal. We want you to role play and imagine that you are introducing a kind of memoir, a series of moments that you were thinking about what you're reading, and to write about yourself as you see yourself as the writer of those entry journals. I, you can either ask your instructor if they prefer first or third person. I personally think either one is fine. You could say, you could write about yourself in the first person saying, I thought these things, I noticed as I looked back at my journal that I was thinking these ideas. Or you might more playfully and creatively uh, write about yourself in the third person if you think that would be fun. Um, another thing I would point out is that uh, you want to focus on the most relevant thread the, to create what is called sometimes a through story or a through line in the history of this person writing this journal yourself. If you are seeing a, a pattern where you're really a keen reader and you're making some really interesting insights or going deep into uh, yourself and asking questions about yourself, pick the thing that seems to be emerging over the course over the arc of your journal as a thing that you particularly were focused on and accentuate and highlight that. Um, I know that journals are filled with some things that you feel are required and then other things where you as the journal writer are starting to open up and to go into unexplored territory and kind of just say what you really think and you're most authentic and you're most uh, open. Those are probably the places to focus. So once you identified your through line, uh, select your entries based on the most best examples of that concept and narrow in on that question or that idea and you can choose to ignore the other questions. Obviously, it would be very difficult and cumbersome to try to do all of these questions in these suggested possible questions list. Just pick one or two that form for you that unifying concept for your introductory essay. Finally, what happens if you are a student who uh, either were uneven in your journal entries or perhaps even missed some journal entries along the way? Well, uh, this is okay. You can, uh, you can, there's a couple of strategies for that. One is to uh, discuss those gaps or those absences in your essay. Why are there no journal entries from that period? What does that suggest about what was going on in the story of yourself over the course of the semester? Another might be to uh, co complete those journal entries retroactively. Um, if you are still, for instance, reading those books, or um, uh, if, yeah, if you have permission from your instructor to, to complete those journal entries retroactively, you might still be able to make up those journal entries. And finally, if you don't have a journal entry, but you did read the book, uh, perhaps you wrote about the book in one of your previous close reading essays. And I think it would be reasonable to draw on the close reading essay as a kind of substitute form of evidence. This is what was going on in me as a writer as I was write, reading, writing 
that close reading paper. Um, so that's a, one, a couple of different strategies for dealing with um, missing journal entries. Okay, uh, just we call it a close reading paper, but uh, as you can see, it's much more reflective. It's much more about yourself. Uh, this gives you a, a kind of uh, special authority to talk about what you know is going on inside of yourself. Uh, and so it has a, a different feel to it. But think of it in a, as a close reading paper in this sense, that you're still trying to show something through an argument and evidence structure. You still want to have a thesis statement and defend it. And you are defending it and supporting it with the evidence of your journal entries. That is your evidence. And so in that sense, it is an exercise in close reading because you have an interpretation to make based on the textual evidence, and you're going to support it in a clear, straightforward, uh, argumentative essay. So uh, catch uh, balancing that structural form that helps to create clear statements with personal exploration and reflection. Uh, have fun with it. Uh, inhabit the role of someone who's looking back over their own uh, development and uh, try to um, put some of yourself into it. Be real and uh, thoughtful. Uh, and with that, I'll just uh, mention one more thing. You want to create some kind of numbering system so we can see what you're referring to directly when you quote or paraphrase different entries. Um, so this is a little bit of a flexibility. You can decide to number all your entries in your final document and refer to them that way. You might number your entries as entries A, B, C, and so on, and then have uh, restart the numbering for each one of them, or use paragraph numbers but however you do it, make sure it's clear and that it's easy for your reader to use whatever system you're, uh, you're using to point to something very specific uh, somewhere else in your document. All right. Uh, good luck writing and, uh, and God bless. Stay safe and, safe and healthy as we uh, go into lockdown these last couple of weeks. Um, good luck with your finals. And uh, thank you for being part of our, uh, our LIBA curriculum this fall. It's been very fun to watch uh, my students develop and grow as they've written their papers and read these texts. Have a great day.